I'm Leah Lawrence. And I'm her husband, Mitch Lawrence. And you are listening to Tailgate Tales, a special series of the Southern Spirits Podcast. Each week, we are taking a deep dive into some history involving a school in the Southeastern Conference. Which one is that going to be this week, Leah? We're going to the University of Mississippi, better known as Ole Miss. All right, the Ole Miss Rebels, which you would never know because we have sharks on our faces. (laughs) Because they're the land-fucking sharks now. No, not land fucking sharks, just land sharks. <laughs> You're right. That could be a problem if they were land fucking <laughs> sharks. All right. Well, Ole Miss is playing. Their Go mascot, ahead. Land Shark Tony, is super yeah. creepy and I wouldn't put it past it. Land Shark Tony. Land Shark Tony. Okay, we're not fucking doing that. That's upsetting. Okay, let's get and started. I told you it was Rebel Shark. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Rebel, Rebel Shark. shark. Do, we can do that one. Do, 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 do. We can do that shark. one. That's fine. Uh, the alcohol is the same as last week. It's the Sweetwater Going Coastal IPA. Talked about it a couple weeks. It's fine. Look at so, those fingernails. Look at that gradient. Oh, yeah. girl. Leah has a good job. fantastic fingernails on the, uh, on the thing here. I've got some gum metal hollow polish on right now <laughs> that I'm pretty fond of but anyway. I'm, s- I'm so i'm so lost as to what <laughs> you could possibly be talking about it's holographic glitter that is gunmetal gray yeah well that's what we're drinking for the third <laughs> week in a row um the only reason that i'm doing this three weeks in a row is because i haven't drank them all because i don't like them as much as the g13 ipa drank those real fast so they're gone and the tradition we're going to talk about for old miss is the grove This just sounds like exactly what I want to happen. I've never been. I would love to go. But the problem is you have to dress up. And uh, we'll get there. That just looks like too many people for me. Yeah, it is. I couldn't deal. I would need like a Xanax and like Mm -hmm. some Zen meditation before I went in. I couldn't handle that shit. Well, the information we're going to talk about real quick comes from uh, the Odyssey Online, which I believe is the school newspaper. I'm not sure. Um, But that's where I got it from. The title of the article is Five Things That Make Ole Miss Game Days the Greatest in All of College Football. And again, this is about the Grove. So here we go. I think this is the entire entry. I can't remember, but I have it all quoted and it's two paragraphs. So um, y'all can take like a 10 minute break or something if you want to. (laughs) But here it comes. Quote, the 10 acre Grove at Ole Miss is the best, that's in all caps, place for tailgating. The fun begins with Trash Can Friday when the Grove is decorated in red and blue trash cans. Students love, all caps, Trash Can Friday because it means game day is so close! Two exclamation points. The excitement of game day continues into Friday night with the rush of people to reserve their tent space all the way to game time and even after the game. Parentheses. No matter if we win or lose, as people always say, we may lose the game, but we will never lose the party. Paragraph 2. Tailgating in the Grove is like your typical tailgate in that there's plenty of food, drinks, and socializing. However, it's rare to see an Ole Miss fan, especially the ladies, show up to a game in shorts and a t-shirt repping team colors. We save that for the warmer days in the spring at Swayze Field, Swayze Field cheering on our baseball boys. You are expected to dress up when you come tailgating in the Grove. Beauty over pain, people. Beauty over pain. Bull shit. I didn't know Patrick Swayze went to Ole Miss. Did he? No, it's the oh. name of the f- oh. Swayze Field. <laughs> Baby, oh. I'm gullible as fuck. I got you good. I'm sorry. <laughs> De- sitting trash cans on a field is not decorating. It's uh, just not. I mean. It's just not. Sounds like you've never put trash cans out on the field, Leah. <laughs> I mean, who we should pitch this one over to Trailer Trash because bless <laughs> their little Mississippi hearts. Oh. That is not decorating. Little Mississippi hearts. And also, I... It, Oh, where exactly in Mississippi is Oxford? Is it closer to the? I think it's the n- coast middle, or the north, middle of it. Either I don't way, fucking know. you know, for maybe we should know those things. For the most part of you know football season, mm-hmm. it is sweaty. It is muggy. It is nasty. I'm sweating right here. This I'm face not, paint's coming mm-mm. off of me. Mm-mm. I'm not. I'm not dressing up. <laughs> I'm not wearing heels. I, I'm not. Sorry, no. love y'all. Not I'm worth sorry. it. I'm sorry that you feel that way. But also, I don't ever plan to go to an old Miss football game either because I would do something <laughs> stupid like paint a land shark on my forehead and get yeah. kicked out. And so. then go to the Grove. Yeah. That's on you, Leah. <laughs> don't be doing that shit. What if All it was right? a very elegant land shark? <laughs> I mean, that's fine. Maybe some crystal teeth. Yeah. Like I said, you should have put bows on yours head. <sighs> there was no place to put it. Yeah. Also, well. did you notice that I gave your shark eyebrows? 
their no, angry eyebrows. I didn't see that. Can I? <laughs> I can't. I tried to zoom in on the the live stream. That's not going to work. <laughs> mm. All right. Well, are we ready to get into our slides? Surely, my dear. All right. I'm going to forward the slide and you take over. All right. So we are going to be talking about William Faulkner and his lovely home, Rowan Oak. So oh. Rowan Oak is actually now owned by the uh, University of Mississippi. Mm-hmm. Um, it's right there in Oxford, very close to campus. Um, William Faulkner, if you don't know who he is, is... <laughs> A very, very famous Southern author. Mm-hmm. Um, he wrote things like uh, Sound and the Fury, uh, As I Lay Dying, that kind of stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Confession, I've only ever read the one Faulkner book. and eh, I don't think I've ever read my any thing. Faulkner. I should probably read more because it makes me feel like a bad Southerner since I haven't read. But the I've only read <laughs> As I Lay Dying. But um, yeah, yeah it, he's a very celebrated author author from right there in Oxford. Uh, He did attend university there, but he made it through three years and he dropped out. So He didn't even graduate? No, he did not graduate from the university. Um, Now I will never read something by him. (laughs) No, he just really wasn't into classes in school and like he just like he made a D in an English class, you know what I mean? Like he just didn't give a shit about like actually staying on topic and stuff like that so Mm -hmm. he just dropped out um and anyway eventually he becomes a noted author and uh he buys this lovely home right there in oxford was Um, he any good at calculus i have no idea i fucking hate it so far i'm sorry it's awful well back to roanoke when am i ever going (laughs) to use derivatives like ever I literally don't know what you're saying because yeah. I failed a semester. Leah, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Baby, I failed a semester of Algebra 2 in high school. This okay. is not the person you should be asking. Well, I'm not asking you. <laughs> I'm telling you, calculus blows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, so this particular home was built originally in 1844 by a man named Colonel Robert Shegog, which mm. is a great name, by the way. I thought was, uh, that was a Mortal Kombat character, I'm pretty sure. Shegog. Hmm. I was going to go for a character in Lord of the Rings, like the, the big uh, spider. See that? Yeah, that just sounds like Shelob, though. That's the spider. Yeah. So, no, mine was funnier. Thank you. <sighs> Fun. Whatever. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, um, it is obviously a beautiful Greek Revival style house. Um, but he did not move into that home until the 1930s. And by the time the 1930s rolled around, Roanoke, which is what he called it, it was just called... Uh, just that house over there that previous house? like it didn't really have a name um mm-hmm. i think that, they called it the old bailey house because the family yep. that owned it before him were the baileys they but, called it the future home of a d student <laughs> yeah basically mm-hmm. um but he named it roanoke because you know trees i guess i don't know rowans are like sort of a mystical magical tree in uh you know just general mythology and oaks because eh, oaks. why not yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sufficiently lost. Why are you lost? I don't. I, I know nothing about trees. Well, it doesn't matter. I know nothing about mythological trees. Let's just say that he <laughs> called it Roanoke in 1930 when he IRL moved into the trees. house. So when he moved into the home, mm-hmm. he and his wife um, did a complete renovation on the interior of the house. But he was really into like that southern gothic, rundown, old manor, creepy kind of vibe on the outside. Okay. So he really didn't do much to it on the outside. And the house still survives basically the way he left it when he died. Um, his daughter actually sold it to the university in the 70s. Um, and they completely preserved it. And it is a museum that you can go through today um, if you want to do that. I think it's like five bucks for a tour. But um That's too much. It's a really neat house. There's a bunch of stuff inside that, you know, it was all William Faulkner's. A lot of his original manuscripts are in there. Um, But more to the point, here is the ghost story of that particular home. Because it's actually a ghost story that William Faulkner himself was uh, fond of telling to all of his, the kids in his family. Because he had nieces and nephews and I was going to ask and stuff. if it was there before him. It sounds like it was. Uh, no, it wasn't. But we'll oh, get there in a minute. He brought the ghost. Yeah. So um, basically, I got all of this information from a book that his niece, which she was the, 
I think she's no longer with us. Uh, I think she died Aww. a few years ago. But um, it's called The Ghosts of Roanoke. And it's just recorded stories that uh, William Faulkner told all of the kids. And as you'll come to find out, most of them have nothing to do with the location or the history of it itself. It's just stuff he made up to tell kids and spook them. So he was also a dick <laughs> who liked to scare children. No, it was just a fun, like... Stay in and school. they called him Pappy. Uh, all of the kids oh. called him Pappy. Oh, I'll bet they did. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this is the story of Judith. Mm. Now, uh, it is Judith uh, Shegog, which was the, quote, daughter of the person who originally built the home. Okay. Now, the story goes that Judith fell in love with uh, a Union soldier. And that, obviously, her being from the South and it being the Civil War and this being a problem, was a problem. Um, and there was also a Confederate soldier that was deeply in love with her as well. Now, there are a bunch of different ways this story goes, because according to the family, he told it a bunch of different ways, just because, uh, keep it fresh, you know? He liked to scare kids on Halloween and tell the stories and uh, that kind of thing. So the story changes depending on who's telling it or what version you're reading. Mm -hmm. But one story is that the Union soldier and the Confederate soldier were out there right in front where the brick path is. Yeah. And they were fighting over. And they were hooting and hollering. And uh, one of their guns discharges and it accidentally hits her up on that balcony where she was standing watching. Uh, and it shoots her, kills her. She flips over the balcony and falls dead right there on the front stoop. That's and what so, she gets for being like a Roman emperor figure. <laughs> Fight for me, boys. Yeah, she's giving him the thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs no. Down. Um, so she falls over the banister and dies right there. Um, that's one way. Um, the other people say that she was actually running away from her, like, because her dad obviously didn't want her to run off with a Union soldier. Mm -hmm. So she had um, tied a bunch of bed sheets together and was climbing down um, from the balcony at the front. Um, and she was climbing down those bed sheets and she fell because, I mean, bed sheets, she wasn't good at tying knots, I guess. <laughs> and she fell and broke her neck and her father came and saw her broken body uh -huh. on the stoop of the home. And so, obviously, that's another way she died. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones say, the other version that I like, there's like six or seven versions, but I'm only going to tell three. Um, but the other version is that um, the two men got in that fight and they accidentally killed each other. And so she was so heartbroken over the fact that no one was left to go out with her that she threw herself <laughs> over the banister and crashed and broke her neck at the bottom. So she was either a super whore <laughs> or super ugly. Those are the two super things. Super ugly? How yeah, because you said in? no one would go out with her. No, just because the two dudes that she was courting had died, so oh. there wasn't no, nobody left Honestly, to go courting Honestly, I with. didn't hear that part because uh, Marissa... You're not paying attention. Well, she was talking about how Dobby... Okay. okay, so that's sort of what happened to her. So, any rate, however she died and whoever she was fucking, or not, depending, um, <laughs> her daddy finds her at the base of, you know, like right there on that front porch, mm -hmm. and he takes her body and he's heartbroken and he goes to the garden and he digs a grave under the magnolia tree um and he buries her there is a magnolia tree a type of rowan oak no a rowan is a tree, a tree. and an oak, is, oak a tree. is a tree and a right. magnolia is a tree so None how many those fucking kind of trees do they have at this place a shit ton fuck this anyway so dumb so story. <laughs> So she's buried there in the garden beneath this magnolia tree, right? Mm -hmm. Well, um, according to that book that I read and a couple of articles, there was one on Southern Living, one at like Roanoke.com actually does go to the museum site for that house if you're interested in looking at more pictures and tour schedules or whatever. But that's where most of this information comes from. But in uh, that article, it said that he was... Like I said before, he really liked the sort of dilapidated look of the outside of the house. It looked old. It looked mm -hmm. gothic. It looked sort of, you know, just creepy and rich. You know what I mean? And he was really into that. And this whole property that they bought had, um, you know, pre-Civil War 
they had beautiful gardens um, and there was one particular maze garden that had once been this beautiful hedge maze kind of situation but it like some trees had grown up around it it sort of blocked out the light of the the hedges and it was it, I mean the raised beds are still there you can go and see them the maze portion of it itself is still there but none mm-hmm. of the trees are growing you know the bushes aren't there to make it a maze yeah um but his wife really wanted to like really redo that garden fix it up make it beautiful like it used to be like victorian kind of like beautiful hedge maze right and william fox was like "Uh uh-uh i don't want that i want it to stay old and creepy and dilapidated this is my aesthetic don't test me woman (laughs) um and so she tried to get the kids involved like fixing up the garden and so it's kind of thought that he made up this story and he placed judith's body Mm -hmm. under the tree in that garden so he could freak the kids out to keep them from helping her fix the garden up and eventually she was just like ah fuck it let him have his creepy old garden um so yeah judith is 100 percent uh made up by um william faulkner himself because uh that family didn't have a daughter and mm. she definitely wasn't named Judith. So plot um, twist. It was their son <laughs> and no. they shot him for being in love with a union soldier. That would have been a better story. A, yeah. um, but B, no, I don't know that they had any children, but, mm. um, so that was the story of that. But then also Roanoke itself is also said to actually be haunted, um, by the spirit of William Faulkner, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a couple of like anecdotes from the people that work there saying that, uh, when they were originally restoring the home after it was purchased by the university, they took a bunch of pictures of the interior just to see where all of the furniture went and all that stuff. They wanted to keep it as original to the home as when the family and themselves was living there as possible. Okay. Um, so while they were moving stuff out, you know, they had taken all of these pictures and there are a few pictures that they found that had like basically a silhouette mist of um excuse me a man shape in the library where he always wrote his books and stuff like that. Creepy. Um, are you okay over there? I'm having hiccups. I'm sorry. <laughs> um but yeah, that's he's he's known to sort of just uh, I believe Pipe tobacco is the smell that people associate with him. So, mm-hmm. like, people can be walking through the house and sort of get that tobacco-y scent. And yep. they think that that's him just sort of hanging out, saying hey to the people that came to visit him. Um, well, that's fun. Yeah. Could just be toothpaste, like Hermione with Ron? <laughs> no, pretty sure it's just pipe tobacco. But You want me to go ahead on the slide? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. That is William Faulkner, um, and then that's his grave. Him and his wife are both buried there. Her name was Estelle. Oh, really? Um, Estelle Faulkner, yeah. There are some names that you just miss. Yeah, Estelle's Estelle's a great name. Yeah. I liked that one. Maybe when we have a daughter, we'll name her Estelle. I'm in. Or next dog, maybe. (laughs) I'm also in for that. (laughs) That might make a little more sense, you know. We could have a son and name him Estelle. Pass it off as like uh, Esteban. What? Yeah. You make no sense. We could figure it out. I mean, your dad calls you Leon all the time. Yeah, but that's just because. Eh. Why? Leah, Leon, I don't know. <laughs> no, I get it. It's close. <laughs> Oh, is there anything else? No, that's it. That's just William Faulkner, and that's where William Faulkner's buried. He's a creepy motherfucker. No, he's not. I hate him. Okay. I hate him for making up a ghost story to scare (laughs) his own children. Oh, there are more ghost stories that he made up that, like I said, go check out that book. It's actually a really neat little read. Um, It's not terribly long, but it's good. And my favorite slide of the season so far. (laughs) Land Shark Tony, Mm y'all. Super creepy. (laughs) I love Land Shark Tony. I, I think do it not. is a great, great mascot. I don't like mascot suits anyway, but most of the time I can breathe through it. Yeah, that's it. so weird I that you don't like it. mascot suits. I can like, I mean, even when we go to conventions and there are like full body furry suits there, mm-hmm. like I try to take a beeline away from it as quickly as possible. Like I can appreciate the craftsmanship. 
I can appreciate how hot those things are to wear, but I don't like being around them. But most of the time, I can deal with it. But if that motherfucker came up to me, <laughs> I couldn't. I just, I would run, and I don't run for anything. So, mm-mm. Well, uh, Marissa agrees with you. She said, no, Leah's right. He's he's super he's creepy. He's super creepy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a shark with it. arms and legs. I love it. I, I hate don't it. care. I love it. Hate it. Absolutely love it. All right. Well, this was another successful tailgate tales, y'all. Woo! I had a great time. Um, Ole Miss. Good luck against Alabama Saturday. You're probably gonna lose. Yeah, but, you fins know. up and all that. Do they? Do they do that? Mm-hmm. Do they do the fit? They do because we talked about it last year, yeah, didn't we? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I actually pay attention when you tell me. Well, things, you Michelle. remembered the funny shark thing. I think is what's happening. You have a memory of the fins up bullshit. Well, it because it was that guy, <laughs> the the guy that died. that yeah. was the forty seven, and that's why yeah. the land shark has the forty seven jersey, right? Uh, something like that. Yeah, I don't remember honestly. All right, fine. I don't know the answer to that. I do one. remember, so <laughs> fins up old Miss. Oh. Hope y'all win. Well, this was fun, y'all. Um, we do want to let you know that we are going to be out of town next weekend, mm-hmm. starting on Thursday. Thursday. So we're going to be doing this stuff a little bit quicker next week, a little bit earlier in the week. Not exactly sure when, but we'll you know put out stuff earlier. So if you want to come hang out for the live stream, all the stuff is going to be released at the same time on uh, Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. So... Just check in with us to see about when we're going to live stream Tailgate Tales. And Midweek Minis will probably still do Sunday like we have been. So anyway, um, I guess that's it for this week's Tailgate Tales, y'all. Tune in to the live episode tomorrow and have some fun watching football today. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all.